Hello and welcome to Clear Skies Astro. I'm Gustavo Maestre. Now deep in the depths of space, a celestial phenomenon is approaching. The C2022 E3 ZTF comet is scheduled to make a pass by of Earth and will be a sight to behold. This celestial wonder has been traveling the depths of space for millennia, for 50,000 years, and is finally going to be within reach. And as it approaches Earth, we'll be able to appreciate the comet in all of its beauty and glory. This isn't just a cosmic spectacle though, it's a reminder of the vastness of our universe. So come with me on this journey as we explore the C2022 E3 ZTF comet and unravel some of its mysteries. I'll be bringing you the latest updates as I try to create an ultimate comet guide. Now, if this is your first visit to Clear Skies Astro, please do pop that subscribe button and show your support. And also, I don't want you to miss out on the images I take as the comet gets closer. Now, let's go. All right, now let's get into this ultimate comet guide. But before we do, I wanted to mention to have you check out the time lapse and the reveal at the end of the video as well. Now, let's cover some facts about Comet C2022E3 ZTF. Now this comet was first discovered on March 22nd of 2022 by the Zwicky Transient Facility in California. It originated in the Oort cloud at the edges of our solar system and was pulled in by the gravity of the sun. It's estimated to be around 1.2 miles or two kilometers in diameter, making it one of the largest comets to pass by Earth in recent history. The comet's nucleus is mostly made of water, ice, and dust with small amounts of carbon dioxide and other volatile materials. And the comet is traveling at about 135,000 miles per hour, which is pretty mind-blowing. And scientists believe that the comet is possibly a fragment of a much larger comet that broke apart in the distant past. The comet's tail is expected to be visible to the naked eye from Earth under the right conditions. And as the comet approaches Earth, it'll be visible in the night sky until mid-February by telescope and when the few days preceding and after its closest pass on February 1st, 2023, when it comes within 7.2 million miles of our planet. C2022 E3 ZTF is expected to be about the size of six moons in length. And as the comet passes by Earth, it will be visible next to Polaris or the North Star. And it will have an exciting alignment with Mars on February 10th but this will be visible only by telescope. The comet's tail is expected to be visible from Earth for several weeks after its closest approach by telescope. And the C2022E3 ZTF comet is not expected to collide with Earth, which is great news, but it will pass close enough for naked eye viewing. It's a rare event to view a comet since they only pass by Earth every five to 10 years. And even though we won't be around to see it, there is a strong chance that this comet will actually never return again. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the equipment that I used to image the comet for this video. For the imaging of the comet, I used the ASCAR FRA 300 Pro telescope matched with a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro full color astro cam. The ASCAR has fast optics at an F5, which is necessary since we're only stacking a few images and you want to get as much light as possible with the lowest amount of noise. And the 300 millimeter focal length at this time was perfect for the target. The ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro camera is able to capture the image in full color and then I used a broadband filter for this type of target. The filter is a Bader Moon and Sky Glow neodymium filter that's capable of blocking street, city, and moonlight while allowing the comet's natural colors to come through. Then I used the ASI Air for session management and it made locating the comet easy. I did notice that it tracked the sky and not the comet, as you'll see in the time lapse at the reveal, but combined with the auto guider, I was able to get nice and clean images. Now let's go ahead and get into some equipment recommendations for your imaging session. Now to start off, I would recommend using a DSLR or an AstroCam for your images matched to a focal length in the 200 millimeter to 500 millimeter range. This will change obviously as the comet approaches closer, but it should work well for framing. Also note that the lower focal lengths right now may require you to zoom in on your image during processing which can impact resolution. But as the comet gets closer, the lower focal lengths will likely take excellent pictures. And even myself, I'm going to give my Frankenstein rig a shot, which has a 200 millimeter focal length, but a very fast f2.8 focal ratio. If you're shooting in light pollution, you'll want to use a broadband filter to improve your images if you have one available. And I'd recommend a tracking mount if possible 
but due to the short imaging time, it's not necessarily required. All right, so let's get into some camera settings. The camera settings that I used for my image with an AstroCam were a gain of 100 and an image duration of one minute with tracking. I stacked the images in Deep Sky Stacker and the sweet spot ended out being nine minutes of total exposure without any trailing of the stars or blurring of the comet. You may be able to exceed this if you can track the comet directly. For a DSLR, I'd recommend the following settings. The aperture as low as you can set it so the camera can collect as much light as possible, the ISO set at 400 to 600, and an exposure at 30 seconds to one minute tracked. That way you can get pinpoint stars and a clean comet. Now if you're not tracking, it can be a little bit more tricky, so I would start off at about a five second exposure and move up from there. It'll also depend on your preference with the star trailing. Okay, so let's get into some viewing information on Comet C2022E3ZTF. Now, I do want to note that it can vary based on latitude, so please take that into consideration. I'd recommend using an app like Sky Safari to locate it easier in the sky. It currently isn't naked eye visible, and in fact, I couldn't see it through binoculars when I was imaging. Now, the comet will be naked eye visible after sunset around the 1st of February when it makes its closest pass to Earth, which is called perigee. Expect the comet to rise slowly over the horizon and not the typical 15 degree sky shift that happens since the comet is traveling opposite of the Earth's rotation. Also, it may be difficult to see if you're in a heavily light polluted area, but I hope you all can catch it. Now mark your calendars and if you can't see it for weather or any other reason, don't fret. I'll be imaging it again and bringing it to you right away. Now let's get into the reveal and I wish you all clear skies.